Switching gears, Fed Chair Jay Powell has signaled to investors that the fight against inflation is not over as the central bank moves to a slower pace of rate hikes. Many investors are pushing back the expected timing of the first rate cut to 2024. But are market participants listening to Jay Powell or responding to economic data? BlackRock Global Fixed Income CIO Rick Reeder joins us now. Rick, perhaps you can help us answer that question. What are investors paying closest attention to? Well, I've, I've learned over my career that uh, ignoring what the Fed is telling you is a uh, can be a pretty dangerous business. Listen, I think you got to take him at his word. I think the Fed. I don't think the Fed's easing easing in 2023. You're going to be cutting rates in 2023. I think. I mean, the risk today is they go another 25 basis points beyond. I think they're going to go 25 the next meeting, and then they go another 25 after that. The economy is doing fine. I think people have written written off the U.S. economy as it's almost definitional has to go in a recession. And some of the data, including that payroll report, suggests otherwise. So, listen, I think you have to build a portfolio assuming the Fed's primary objective, as you said, is they still have got to get what is elevated inflation a bit lower. So, you know, we're managing the portfolios relative to that. Um, Rick, if the Fed does raise 25 basis points and then another 25 basis points after that, does that tip what you say is a, a you know solid footing economy into recession is that like sort of what it pivots on no i so i think people underestimate you know first of all employment in this country if you look at the jobs report from last month you're hiring people in education healthcare nur nurses uh certainly managed care you're hiring people in restaurants in hospitality we are so far below the level that we still need to get to from pre-pandemic for those jobs. And you think about a lot of those jobs, they're not cyclical, they're not interest rate sensitive. You know, hospitals hiring nurses, schools hiring teachers, those are not cyclical. So I think people underestimate, we're still at, I mean, we ran the numbers, we think we're over 800,000 people still in deficit in those roles. So, but what's happening is inflation is coming down, like the chair said, he said, you know, we're disinflating. You see that in the goods sector, and we're still keeping a lot of people employed. That is nirvana. That's an economy that is, you want that to happen. And so and I don't think the Fed should kill that. And I don't think they will. What's what, you know, keeping rates this high are going much further. Then I think you start to impact the interest sensitive housing, commercial real estate, auto finance. So I think you get to a level, whether that's five and a quarter, maybe you have to go 25 more, leave it there for a while, let it percolate through the system. The economy will moderate. And I, and I think the Fed will achieve its goals. And, and it doesn't mean we have to go into a deep recession to achieve it. Rick, as a markets veteran, I'd love to get your thoughts on this mania we're seeing in AI stocks. I and mean, do you think the Fed caused this by suggesting last week that they may pivot on rates? Well, that's a good question. I, so I don't, I don't think so. I mean, by the way, you can go back a year and think about the incredible speculation in meme stocks, in crypto, et cetera, that there's no doubt, inclu by the way, including leverage, that builds alongside of when you keep rates too low for too long. There's no question that that's the that's the ultimate evolution from that. This, I think, is something a bit different. You know, we could argue are people speculating, but the sheer size of the market and the opportunity set for some of the big tech companies and some of the companies that are in the space, you see it in semis, et cetera. It's a pretty big evolution of where commerce is going to go. You know, question is, in some places, is it overdone because people all flow into the area at once? But I don't think this one is akin to what happened last year. That was clear speculation and overzealousness. And what about the zealousness, perhaps, within crypto early on to start 2023, Rick? Uh, so I, it's a, that is a tough one because, listen, I mean, it traded off a lot. I think people have gotten a sense, you know, we're worried about, you know, the delevering that was happening, the entities, the number of coins that have been built up, the gearing that was built around it had to be unwound. And now you're seeing a lot of it come out. And, and so there's a bit of stability on the back side of it. So I don't know. It's a, it is. I mean, that's a tough one to, to think through, you know, should it be here or a bit or a bit lower? Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, again, I wouldn't put that one so much to policy last year, definitely, when we saw levels that were extreme and the, and the leverage that was building around crypto. That to me was a clear uh, derivative of the fact that policy was too easy for too long. So, Rick, let's get back to your bread and butter for a second in stocks and bonds. You sound pretty bullish to me when you're talking about the economy, the Fed outlook, et cetera. How is that flowing through to, to your strategy right now? Uh, it's because it's really, so I, by the way, I, don't, I didn't mean to give the impression. Like, I think stocks are OK. I don't you know, the multiples 
are not building in any, uh, any quite frankly, any recession uh, prospects. So I think the equity market is OK. I, you know, do I think it'll do its job and maybe hit a, a, a mid to high single digit return this year, which, by the way, has done a lot of that already? Uh, I think they're just OK. What I'm very bullish about is you can now build an inbuilt income in your portfolio. I mean, the two year note, we're back to four and a half. You can put some spread on a portfolio, you know, with rate volatility coming down because the Fed's going to be on pause for a period of time. You can build a portfolio and create a six in fixed income without taking a lot of credit risk, without taking a liquidity risk, without having to go way out on the yield curve. That is super exciting. I mean, you don't get many times in your career that you can build a six and sleep well at night. And uh, and that that I'm really bullish about. Can you create a six that maybe? You know, with some tactical opportunities in places like emerging markets, can you create an eight or nine, you know, without taking a lot of risk? That's pretty exciting. For uh, And that's you talk about something that's really different than coming in the beginning of 2022. This is this is for for, like you say, a veteran uh, fixed income <laughs> investor. This is this is exciting stuff. This is as exciting as it gets. Rick, everything you just said is is more exciting to me than any of this A.I. stuff. Maybe that's just you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a veteran, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, no, I think, I, listen, I, I think it is. By the way, you know, now you think about the difference from last year, you can now do some things to hedge your risk mm -hmm. because interest rates now people anticipate maybe the Fed will have to have to start easing sometime in the future. All of a sudden, equity volatility is lower. You can use some hedges and equities. The dollar is not just on a straight line up. It's starting to move with with growth. So all of a sudden, you now have ways to manage portfolios that you didn't have last year. So, again, like a lot of stuff that makes you feel better about investing is uh, is happening in 23 versus 22. All right, we'll let you get back to your day job. BlackRock Global Fixed Income CIO, Rick Reader, always nice to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.